Good morning, everybody. Um, I have to apologize that I'm online. I had some uh, difficulties traveling uh, this year. And so um, let me nonetheless join you. And, and thank you, Ginger and Joan, for um, organizing this wonderful panel. Uh, my objective really for this short intervention is to discuss how algorithms and data jointly define the economics of digital platforms and how um, it also informs the public policy uh, surrounding them. I'm going to try to lead the presentation to some recent work um, on digital auctions uh, and bidding algorithms. And um, hopefully I will at the end conclude that really this interaction between algorithm data will be central uh, for a long time uh, and um, may already be indicated by our early understanding of large language models such as chat GTPT. So um, let me just think or suggest what I would uh, think as defining features of digital or electronic commerce are. We have an incredible heterogeneity in terms of diversity, in terms of preferences among the buyers. Um, it is matched with an equally grand and large heterogeneity in terms of feature and characteristics of products that these buyers um, are uh, offered in terms of products by sellers. And there's pervasive uncertainty uh, about the value of the match between specific buyers, specific preferences, and specific products. That's uh, really where digital platforms come in that serve as a matchmaker between buyers and products and buyers and sellers. So on the one hand side, uh, they can create surplus by matching consumers and products and use uh, data from past or concurrent transactions. So they serve as information matchmaker. And besides data use algorithms that support the match formation. And they then can also use the data and the allocation rules that they're choosing to induce or govern or distribute market powers between buyers and sellers. And so uh, it's in that view that we often think of the uh, platforms as being informative as well as competition gatekeepers in the matchmaking. And it's for that reason uh, of playing jointly the role of being a gatekeeper for information and for um, the position and for the competition that uh, various concerns arise in public policy. So. Uh, in the um, design and the structure of digital markets acts in the European Commission that is trying um, to control and uh, undo certain negative consequences that arises from platform acting as digital gatekeepers. How successful they are, we will see in the future. And uh, in particular, many of the reports in preparation of the digital markets that pointed out that dominant platforms in particular, so those platforms that have market powers, may well have an incentives to use their ability to control monopoly position to those sellers and therefore uh, may convey market power uh, either to themselves or to sellers uh, that may um, act on their platforms. So, um, in these two definitions or in these two roles of information gatekeeper and competition gatekeeper, data and algorithms that support the data um, is really key. Uh, and in particular, uh, they operated, as we know by now, through personalizing content in the form of recommender systems. And, and that clearly helps both in the creation but also is instrumental in the support uh, in the support of the extraction of the surplus. So if you think about any kind of retail platforms, uh, or if you think about any kind of advertising platforms, then um, they work through offering on the basis of data personalized content that's supported by algorithms um, that do so. And so the central features uh, of this interaction between data and algorithm, I would suggest, are product steering to personal ads and offers, auctions that are used to rank content 
and personalized recommendation. Um, and finally, the use of data by the platform to establish an informational advantage in uh, the creation of those matches. Okay, so the, the mechanisms um, of ranking and recommendations um, are all known to you, whether you are on shopping websites such as Amazon, whether you are on social uh, networks such as Instagram or LinkedIn, or on shopping websites um, in China, um, there will always be an element of ranking and recommendation. And it is going to be supported by auctions that are powered in the platforms where the auctions will use data that the platform gathers over time, whether you do that on Google, whether it's being supported by Microsoft, Criteo, uh, or any other form uh, that helps steering and extracting part of the surplus. Okay, so uh, let me think a little bit through the implication that follows from this interaction of algorithm and data uh, in the context of digital auctions. And so um, here's some background reading uh, that I can offer you not now, but for, for later on. Uh, much of this is a uh, joint work together with Alessandro Bonatti uh, from MIT Sloan. Let me um, use as a leading example um, the role of data uh, for digital auctions and um, for uh, auction algorithm, bidding algorithms. Okay. In the paper uh, on data competition and digital platforms, what we're trying to develop is a model of digital commerce which has uh, three critical features that auctions are used to rank content and issue personalized recommendations, that we use product steering to effectively form personalized ads and support uh, consequent offers, and to use the data that the platform has gathered to pass interaction to gain uh, an informational advantage that improves the matchmaking, but also improves the competitive, the competitive position vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the uh, offline markets. Okay. The other elements uh, that we have in the model and that we think are key for, the, uh, for digital commerce is that sellers may act on the platform, but they may also sell their products of the platform. The web, uh, offers an incredible amount of free content or organic search results, and we want to account for that. Um, and finally, um, as was mentioned earlier, we don't necessarily have to sell the information or market the information, but we can tie the information to the product recommendation. We want to see how that works its way uh, through the economy. Okay, so let me give you uh, a few uh, implications and results that we derive formally in the paper that gives us a perhaps first comprehensive view of how data and algorithm um, serve sort of as the constituent features of digital platforms and how it enables them to um, arrive at a favorable competitive position. What the platform does through the auction is it sells prominence, but it does so by uh, optimally enabling trade under symmetric information between the buyers and sellers, because that reduces the adverse selection in the trade and leads to higher volume of sales, higher total surplus and higher prices. Okay. While on the platform, we are arriving at a socially efficient trade, uh, off the platform sales channel um, are actually being reduced in order to support more efficient trade on the platform. So the interaction of on-platform trade and off-platform trade will typically mean that there will be more efficient, more beneficial trade on the platform, but less uh, efficient trade of the platform. Okay, And any amount of increase in the informational advantage that the platform has will typically lead 
to narrow the consumer search option of the platform, even though it still supports efficient trade on the platform. This lets us to a view um, of what it means for a platform to grow, either in terms of having more consumer or having better data, or typically a combination of the two. It will mean that trade on the platform is enhanced, but it will lead to a lowering in the quality of the outside options of the trades that will happen offline. And so, so that um, is a concern. Second, um, to the extent uh, that we can influence the information sharing on the platform, but possibly also with competitors of the platform, so organic search, um, so information sharing, so models of federated learning, what we understand is that the way we govern the data sharing or the data usage will actually materially impact the product design and the pricing decisions both online and offline. Let me push this now um, just one step further. Okay, What would happen or what does happen when a platform um, offers improvements in the algorithms or improvements in the data or often both. And so towards this end, we are going to analyze in this paper, a sequence of increasingly sophisticated auction algorithms and usage of data sources that the platform has. So we start out with the classic model of a general second price auction. Uh, that's the one that Google and Nike uh, started using for sponsored search. And we're now thinking about what happens if we are supporting the second price auction with data that the platform has that helps create better matches between sellers and buyers. And what happens if we beyond that actually design as a platform a bidding campaign or an advertising campaign on behalf of a seller that operates on our platform. Okay, These are sort of three steps by which we offer increasingly sophisticated algorithm to support the matchmaking that are infused with more and more data. And in fact, a common practice nowadays is that actually the sellers do not bid anymore for their advertising, but rather sign off the design of the bidding to auto bidding algorithms, which are run by the platform directly. Okay. okay. This will typically then mean that it will be optimal to restrict the competition with the organic links and put more emphasis on sponsored content. And through both controlling data as well as the bidding algorithm, the platform can actually control the selection as well as the pricing group. We call this a sophisticated campaign. Now this um, sort of allows for what we call best value pricing. And in fact, achieves the social outcome that's the same as if we have an integration between the platform and the producer. So it creates a lot of social value, but of course, tilts the distribution of the surplus very much to, uh, towards the platform. So this use of data and algorithm together is very powerful, uh, but it conveys a lot of market power that um, we might want to think about how to, um, how to channel and how to moderate, okay? So um, I had some pictures here that um, maybe got lost just to illustrate the role and the emphasis on bidding algorithms, in particular auto bidding algorithm, that is central for much of the digital auction world right now. Let me conclude by saying that while we're starting to understand the role and the sophisticated interaction between data and algorithmic design that really um, is central to, to fully understanding the reach of digital platform, this interaction is going to be perhaps even more important uh, in sort of the next evolution uh, of digital commerce when we go come to uh, a, a level of artificial intelligence, in particular 
uh, large language models um, that we have seen in the current discussion. Okay, so the same nexus between algorithm and data is also going to be central for large language models, right? Because these large language models are trained on large private and public data sources. So, for example, in the case of ChatGPT, all of GitHub, all of Archive, which is basically a large um, uh, a reservoir of academic research, and all of Reddit is being used to train ChatGPT, and of course, much more than that. Okay, That's for the data training that just shows you how important data is. On the other hand, um, the algorithms is basically a question of how large can the parameter space be that on which we can run the algorithm. And so increasing the scale and the level at which we can think about conveying and uh, tuning, fine tuning a trade off between the algorithm, the size of the algorithm and the size of the training data is really key. And how we think about the returns to a lot of the public data that is used in the LMMs will be a major policy issue. So, um, so this is uh, to suggest that indeed um, these issues are going to be pervasive. They're important to understand digital platforms today. They will probably be even more important to understand the economics of artificial intelligence going forward. Thank you.